again, and welcome to our next program here at Vacation Bible School. We're talking about right here the choices of a champion. I hope you've been with us before. We're going to have a great time again today as we learn another choice that will make us be a champion for God. Remember, you can't be a champion unless you make the right choices. Each time we've got together, we've looked at choices that you can make. Some choices are good. Some choices are bad. It's up to you to make the right choice. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking right now. You're thinking, no, I can learn about being a champion, but I'll never be a champion. Or maybe one day when I grow up, maybe then I'll become a champion. Did you know that you can become a champion right now? You say, Mr. Jason, you don't even know how old I am. I'm only six or I'm only eight or I'm only 10. It doesn't matter how old you are. You can still be a champion by the choices you make no matter what age you are. You may say, well, that seems impossible that God could make me into a champion even at my age. But you're forgetting. God can do impossible things because He is God. Well, let me give you an example of what I mean, okay? I brought a water bottle with me. Where's my water bottle? I thought I had it anyway. Oh, here it is. I drank it. There's no water in it. This is a water bottle, okay? It's empty. All the water's gone. Is it possible for me to take this cap that screws on the top like this? Is it possible for me to take this cap right here and fit it in the bottle, yes or no? The answer would be no, it's not. But I think I can. You see, that's impossible. Watch carefully. Here we go. One, two, three. There it is. The cap is inside the bottle. You see, that's impossible. That can't happen. Wait a minute. Just like you may think it's impossible for you to be a champion, but with God, all things are possible. He wants you to be a champion, but you have to make the right choices. That's what we're going to talk about today, okay? Let's put the bottle back over here, all right? Miss Brooks is going to come out and help us with our theme song. I hope you've learned this song already. If you haven't, you can still learn it, okay? It's O oh Christian, Be a Champion. And Miss Brooks and Miss Tess are going to come out and sing that song for us at this time. Come on, ladies, let's sing the song. Sing it good. All right, let's go ahead and sing our theme song together, okay? It goes like this. Oh, Christian, oh, Christian, be a champion, be a champion, fight your battles in the faith, fight your battles in the faith, do your best to run the race, do your best to run the race. Oh, Christian, oh, Christian, be a champion, be a champion, do not waver, do not fear, do not waver, do not fear, for our Lord is ever near, for our Lord is ever near. Oh, Christian, oh, Christian, be a champion, be a champion, hurry up and grab your sword, hurry up and grab your sword, choose to battle for the Lord, choose to battle for the Lord. All right, good job, guys. Boy, I hope you have a desire to be a champion. I have a desire to be a champion. Listen, just because you get older, you're not automatically a champion. It's the choices that you make. We've learned some choices. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Over here, there's all kinds of choices. We have three boxes here. One of them says God. Some choices we make come from God. This box here says the world. The world offers all kinds of choices. They tell you if you make those choices, you'll become a champion, but that's not necessarily true. And then there's a box that says you. This represents you. This represents me. We have to choose what choices we're going to put in our our life. Listen, we make all kinds of choices every day. Many, many, many choices. I said before, I'll say it again. The choices that you make determine everything. One wrong choice could cost your life. One right choice, listen, could make the difference in life and death. Choices are very, very, very important. All kinds of choices here. Some of them good, some of them bad. Now, I had a good friend, my friend Duncan. He didn't show up yesterday. Who knows where Duncan is? He was supposed to help us, but he didn't show up. So anyway, oh, there he is. You call me? Hi, Duncan. I didn't see you yesterday. Where were you? I was eating sprinkles. Oh, getting sprinkles. I see. Yep, yep. So some donuts have sprinkles on them, right? I don't. Oh, you know, you're just a plain donut? There's nothing plain about me. Oh, you're not, you're not plain? No. Nope. But, but I have seen some donuts that have jelly inside. Is that true? Yep. Isn't there some donuts that have cream inside? Is that true? Yep. And then some donuts even have sprinkles on top. That's true, right? Yep, yep. 
I think I know what's going on now. Duncan wants to be a champion. Here's the way Duncan's being a champion. He figured, listen, if he's a plain donut, I'll just hold on for a second, Duncan. If he's a plain donut with no sprinkles and no jelly and no cream, then Baptist people are less likely to eat him. Is that true, Duncan? That's right. See, see, he, he's pretty smart. Uh, Duncan, I'm going to look at some of these choices. Let me move over here on this side. Um, let's see. The world offers some choices here. I'm going to pull one of them out. This one right here says quit. I wonder if that... Bad ingredient. Ah, Duncan's right. This is a bad ingredient. If you choose to be a quitter, you can't be a champion. That's impossible. Let's look at another one in here. Let's see. This one says, that's a long word there. This one says laziness. A bad ingredient. It is a bad ingredient. If you add laziness to your life, if you choose to put that in your life, guess what? You can't be a champion. But God also offers us some. Let's reach in here and find out some choices, okay, that God would give us. How about joy? Ah, good ingredient. That is a good ingredient. If you add joy to your life, listen, that's a choice. You can become a champion with joy. Let's put that over here, okay? Uh, let's see about another ingredient. Let's reach in here. Oh, here's another one. Uh, this one says courage. Ah, good. Good a, ingredient. It is a good ingredient. Yes, it is. All these different choices that we can choose, listen, either make us a champion or make us champion. a loser. Champion, yep. Gotta be a champion. And, and you're a champion? Yep, I'm a champion. Well, let's see some of these choices that we chose the last couple days. Open the box here. We learned about, oh, the first one, we learned about faith. Oh, yeah. Faith is a good, it's a good ingredient, isn't it, Duncan? Yep, like sprinkles. Like sprinkles, yes. Faith is, listen, it's a good ingredient. We'll put that right there. It's a good choice. We learned about another one. In fact, I remember this one here. I think Mr. Gruff told us this one. This one was the word sacrifice. Oh, that's an important choice to be a champion for God. you got to be willing to sacrifice. Listen, nothing usually ever works out good unless sacrifice is placed in there, okay? We'll put sacrifice down there. How about another one? I know we learned another one yesterday. How about this one here? Charity. Ah, yep. Good ingredient. That is a good ingredient. Charity is another word for love. We learned that last time. And it's essential. It's important to become a champion for God. We need these choices. We're going to learn some more choices today that will turn us into a champion for champion. God. Yep, champion. And you're a champion, right, Duncan? Yep. You're positive? You a champion. What? Yes, I'm a, well, I, I'm trying to make the right choices, and God will turn me into a champion if I make the right choices, right? Yep. Are you going to help us again tomorrow, maybe? I'll be here. You will? Well, I don't know. Well, what? I, I might be eating. You might be eating? Sometimes I have to hide. Sometimes I have to eat. What, what, why do you have to hide? Oh, that's right. We're Because we're in church, right? You Baptist. Baptist people. I forgot. But in Baptist people, they'll still eat plain donuts, too, even if there's no sprinkles, no jelly, no cream. I've even seen them dip donuts in coffee. Is that true? Yep. So... I'll talk to you later, Duncan, okay? Yep. See ya. I'm glad Duncan's here to help us. Listen, I hope you're wanting to make the right choices. We're going to be talking about it all day. Choose right now in your mind and in your heart. I'm going to make the right choices to become a champion for the Lord. Let's do our pledges together, okay? Everyone stand where you are. Maybe you're in your living room at home, okay? Let's turn and face the American flag first. Put our right hand over our heart. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we're going to pledge to the Christian flag. I want you to notice that the Christian flag and the American flag have the same colors. The same colors. That is not a coincidence. There's a reason for that. Listen. America was established as a Christian nation. Absolutely. Let's face the Christian flag right hand over our heart. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. And now we'll pledge to the Bible God's holy word. Okay. Let's turn. Right hand over our heart. Attention. Salute. Pledge, I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. 
every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking, looking around, around, very, very still. still and very quiet, right where you're at in your living room, just close your eyes, no matter where you're at. Let's pray together and ask God to bless our program today, okay? Father, we do thank you for the day that you've given to us. I pray that you'll bless our program. Help us as we learn about another choice that if we're willing to make it, we will become a champion for you. God, I pray for each young person that's watching the program. Lord, maybe it's their first time. Maybe they've watched every time. I pray that you'll open their heart to the truth of God's word. May they choose to be a champion, allow you to work in their heart so they can become a champion. Most importantly, we pray. Maybe there's someone listening today. If they were to die tonight, today, tomorrow, they're not sure they would go to heaven. There's never been a time and a place they trusted Jesus as their Savior. God, we pray your Holy Spirit would convict their heart. May they trust Jesus as their own personal Savior today. God, we'll thank you for what you will do. Help us to expect great things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Each day, we've invited a friend or a guest to help us, okay, uh, during our spotlight time to help us give us a word or a choice that would help us be a champion, okay? And today I've invited a friend of mine. There he is, my good friend, Elmer. How are you, Elmer? Hey, Brother Jay. Right back at you. How are you doing? You doing good? Can't complain. Still breathing. Oh, it's good to still be breathing. Uh, I I'm glad to see you, Elmer. I'm, I'm glad you were willing to come and help us, okay? Yeah, you know, I've been doing a lot of turkey hunting. Turkey hunting. Yup, you can't believe this Jake I shot. Okay. His beard was 12 inches long. Wow. He good. was so big. Wow. I stuffed him. You stuffed the turkey? I got him on the wall over my couch. Over your that couch. That way I could sit in my recliner and look at him. Wow. That's Man, sweet. he was huge. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. And he tasted great. You ate him too, huh? Yup, you liked a turkey hunt. I do, li I do like the turkey hunt. Yes, I do like the turkey hunt. So listen, are you going to help us uh, with our, our question today or, or with our keyword today? Uh, remember, uh, we, we were talking today about, uh, you got my letter, right? Oh, uh, yeah, when I got it, I was uh, trying to figure out what it was you were uh, needing my expertise on. Okay. Now, suppose you just tell me face to face. I understand things better that way, you know. Eyeball to eyeball. Well, yeah, I like talking eyeball to eyeball, too. Well, our theme for the Vacation Bible School Online this year is the choices of a champion. And so I... I Man, you sure picked a good one. Yeah, that is a good that is a good thing. So I wanted your expertise on... We have, what we do is we invite guests in each day to kind of pick a choice... That would, if we do this and we choose this choice in our life and put it in our life, it'll make us into a champion. So, why am I here again? You're, we're, they're the guest today. I'm a guest. No fooling. Yeah. You're joshing me. No, I'm not joshing you. I'm serious. You're the guest today. I wanted you to give us a key word, a choice, whatever it is that comes to your mind. I'm if, flattered. I don't know what to say. Well, well I want you to give us a, a choice, okay? That would turn us into I a I do believe I'm speechless that you chose me. Wow. I mean... Is it because I'm an expert hunter? No, it's not because you're an expert hunter. Let me guess, it's because I'm a great shot. No, it's not because you're a great shot. Well? Can you answer the question? Do you have a choice man, for us? I just can't get over the fact that you asked me to be your special guest today. <laughs> well, you I are my special I feel right honored. But getting past all these feelings swelling up inside me, I'm going to tell you what I think about you. Good, good, good. Okay. Brother Jay, I know a lot of champions. They're fellows in the Bible. Okay. And David was one of them. Right. You know, he hacked the head off a nine foot giant. Yes, you know he did. why he was able to do that? Um, Being just a kid and all, uh, tell me. it's because he was a champion. That's true, he was a champion, you're right. And what made him a champion was he had 
hurry. Ah. And that's what I'm telling you. I think you got to have courage to be a champion. So that's the word he gave us. You know, one number, that's a very good word. I don't think I've ever heard of a champion that didn't have courage. That's an excellent choice. An excellent. Boy, I can't imagine. I can't imagine fighting a giant. I'm a grown man, but fighting a giant? Oh, yeah. Fiddlesticks, my knees be knocking together. Yeah. And it'd be a way back then. I wouldn't have had old Betsy. Uh -oh, I Betsy. never fought with a sword before. Yeah. But is... know what? What? I can flat use a slingshot. Yeah. Or I can hit a squirrel at 50 yards. Wow. But a squirrel ain't a giant. No, it's not a giant, no. A squirrel can't step on me like a grasshopper no, no, and squish me like a bug. That's exactly right. Boy, a 10-foot giant, you would yeah. be scared. You That's would... why David was a champion. Right. He had courage. He trusted in the Lord. He didn't have those weapons like, like we have today. Yep, no. He trusted in the Lord, and God gave him courage. He killed more than a giant, you know. He, he killed a lion and a bear. That's exactly right. He did kill a lion and a bear. You're right. You're right. I killed a bear before. Wow. But I used old Betsy. Oh, old Betsy here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, imagine, imagine with a sling. Unbelievable. The courage it must have took. Listen, he's right. Courage is essential if you're going to be a champion for God. That is an excellent, excellent choice, Elmer. I appreciate you taking the time. Yes, sir, sure, Brother Jay. And if you need any more advice, right. just, you know, send me a letter. You could call, but okay. I ain't got a phone. You don't have a phone? No. Shoot, where I live, they couldn't even get a telephone pole. It's straight up the mountain. Oh, and I, got I you. do mean straight up. I got you. So, so send your letter if I need more expertise. I got it. Elmer, yeah, I yeah. want to thank you again for taking your time to come and give us this keyword, this choice that could turn us into a champion the choice of courage. I want to thank you once again. What a compliment. Thanks, Brother Jay. I'll, hey. I'll be seeing you. I'll see you later, Elmer. Ten four, good buddy. <laughs> see you, Elmer. Uh, Elmer gave us a great choice today, guys. A great choice. That choice of courage. We're going to be talking about what courage means. Listen, courage is essential. You want to be a champion of God, you have to have courage. You need it. It's one of those choices you must put in your life if you want to be a champion for God, okay? Let's all stand together. We're going to have some singing time, okay? Miss Brooks is going to lead us in some music, all right? So I hope you're ready to sing. Maybe you need to stretch a little bit, breathe in through your nose, uh, pushing out your mouth. I hope you guys like to sing praises to the Lord. By the way, that's one of the choices over here is praise. Did you know the Bible says the Lord inhabits our praise? He can't wait. When you sing praises to Him, He listens from heaven. He loves to hear you sing praises. So you lift your voice and do your very best. Come on, Miss Brooke. Help us with some singing. All right. We're going to sing a couple songs together. The first song we're going to sing is called Walking with the Lord. So those of you who know it, sing it along with me, okay? It goes like this. How did it feel when you came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness? How did you feel when you came out of the wilderness, walking with the Lord? Walking with the Lord, walking with the L-O-R-D. How did you feel when you came out of the wilderness, walking with the Lord? Satan didn't like it when you came out of the wilderness, came out of the wilderness satan didn't like it when you came out of the wilderness walking with the lord walking with the lord walking with the l o r d satan didn't like it when you came out of the wilderness walking with the lord i felt so great when i came out of the wilderness I felt so great when I came out of the wilderness walking with the Lord. Walking with the Lord, walking with the L-O-R-D. I felt so great when I came out of the wilderness walking with the Lord. All right, good job, guys. We're going to sing one more song together, and it's called My Heart Was Dark With Sin, okay? So let's sing it, okay? 
My heart was dark with sin until the Savior came in. His precious blood I know, he washed me white as snow. And in God's word I'm told, I'll walk the street of gold to grow in Christ each day. I read my Bible and pray. All right, good job, guys. Now it's time to go over our memory verse. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. I'll be right back. Hello, Miss Brooke. Miss Brooke, hello. Where's everybody at? I take one lunch break and I come back and everybody's gone. Miss Brooke! <laughs> Miss Brooke! Okay, I'm, well, I'm here, I'm here. I'm sorry, I had to go grab something. Where were you? I've been calling for like 30 minutes. I know, I know. I had to grab something from backstage, sorry. Oh, I didn't see you. Oh, I figured that. You were yelling pretty loud. <laughs> yeah, well, I, um, I got worried because of your safety and all. Oh, my safety. You were worried. So you weren't you weren't scared or anything, were you? Of course not. I'm oh. brave. Oh, you're brave? Okay, well, now that you're here, we better go over our memory verse because we have a long memory verse for today. I know. I was studying all last night for it. Oh, my you were? My eyes are hurting. <laughs> so you know it pretty good then, huh? Eh, I think so. Charlie was helping me learn it. Oh, where is Charlie? I was wanting to meet him. I thought you were going to bring him today. I did. He's right here. Come I, on, Charlie. I don't see him. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Ta-da. Oh, hey, Charlie. Hello. I'm Miss Brooke. It's so great to finally meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. Sammy told me. He helps you with the memory verses. That's right, he does, and he's a great help. Yeah, I like learning the memory verses, but it took me longer today. Yeah. Yeah, that verse was big. Yes, it is a big one. So let's go ahead and try to say it together, okay? So it's so long, all right? Joshua 1, 9. Have I not I, I commanded, commanded thee, thee, be strong and of good, good courage. courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua 1, 9. Sammy, what does it mean? Thank you for asking, Charlie. This verse means, after studying it very attentively, that... Um, you know what I'm going to do, Charlie? I'm going to let Miss Brooke tell you, <laughs> because my throat's a little raspy. <laughs> All right, it's talking, this verse is talking about the word courage, Charlie. Sammy, can you tell Charlie what courage means? You see, Charlie, courage means you have no fear. Well, not exactly. It means being brave even when you feel afraid. That's what I said. (laughs) Sometimes it's hard to have courage. That's right, it is hard to have courage, but we know we can always have courage because God is always with us. Exactly what I was going to say, Miss Brooke. You must have read my mind. Wow, Sammy. You must know a lot about courage. That's true, Charlie. But that is not the best part of my character. No, it's not. The best part of me is my humility. (laughs) (laughs) But humility means not bragging about yourself, Sammy. Okay. Charlie, you brag about me. I don't think he understands what humility means, Miss Brooke. I don't think so either, Charlie. Well, all this talk is making my tummy rumble once again, so it's time for dinner. (laughs) Say goodbye, Charlie. Bye, Miss Brooke. All right, bye, guys. My word, him and his stomach. All right, let's go over our verse, okay, because it's a long one. Joshua 1, 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Joshua 1, 9. Very, very good. I hope you guys are learning your memory verses. Remember, the more you hide God's word in your heart, the less you sin against him. 
Today the verse is on courage. I hope, listen, we're talking all day about courage, making this choice so you can be a champion for God. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. But first, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. You know Mr. Jason loves magic tricks. I love playing with magic tricks and doing magic tricks. And I thought I would try to do a trick for you guys today. This is a trick with some steel rings, okay? Steel rings. Now, I have... Um, six steel rings here, okay? I'll count them out for you. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and one more makes ten. Ten steel rings. No, I'm just kidding. It's six. All right? Six solid steel rings. Six steel rings, all right? Now, they're magic rings. Now, watch carefully. This is the, this is the fun part. They join. That's the amazing thing to me is how they join when they're solid steel. But they do. Blows my mind. And they're very hard once they link uh, to get unlinked. You can't. It's very, sometimes you have to. You, you can pull and pull and pull. You have to blow like this. And then they'll pull loose. Now there's a secret. Here's the secret. The secret is there is a magic hole. Are you ready? You have to look for it. Where is it? It's there somewhere. Oh, it's, there it is. The hole is right here. See it? Of course, if you don't want the ring there, you just take it off like so. Again, look for the secret hole. Ready? There it is. Reach through the hole. Take it back off like so. Let's try. How about let's try in midair. Now, listen, this, this is hard, but I'm going to try it for you guys, okay? Midair. Here we go. Midair. Get ready. This is hard. But I'm going to try it. Here we have one ring. We have two rings. Whew. I'm nervous already. Are you ready? Here we go. Three rings. There you go. Come back over here. Let's find that secret hole. Where is it? Somewhere there. There it is. Bring this one over like so. Comes across, goes up, and joins on the top. Now we have three on the arm and three in the hands like this, right? Comes through, pulls off. This one goes down. Up, over, up. Again, I told you guys the secret is right there, that hole. Where is it? There it is, right. Where is that hole? Of course, if you don't want it down here on the bottom, you can bring it all the way up through, pull it off the top, or this one can go over like so. Go down to this one, which goes down to this one, which goes down to this one, which goes down to this one. Wow, four of them all, all together. Four leaf clover, pair of glasses, bifocals. Here we have four rings joined in eight places like the Olympics. It's not easy, trust me. It's going to be weeks to figure that one out. So we have four rings here. This one comes across. We'll add number five. Five comes across. Wow. So we have five rings. And now for the grand finale. Here we go. Get ready. Are you ready? I hope you're ready. Here we go. Six rings all joined together. Six rings. And that's the magic linking rings. I hope you enjoyed it. All right. I love magic tricks, okay? Sit up straight and tall, very still and very, very quiet. Each day we've been looking at a couple friends of ours. And my son, Brother James, is going to come out and help us. He's been showing you some friends. And I hope you're listening to their stories and what's happening in their lives and learning from what happens to them. Listen, sometimes we watch someone else's life. We learn what to do and what not to do. Listen carefully. Brother James, take it away. Thank you, Brother Jason. As you've been talking about, we're going to look into the lives of Brody and Digby once again. Last time we saw a lot of uh, what? Fear from Digby. But today we're focusing on what? Courage. So let's see if we can get a little bit more insight on this subject. Hello there, Brother Caldwell. Hey, Digby. Hey, Brody. Brother Caldwell, as you know, I've just come out of hibernation, and there's been word all around that you're looking for a champion. You well, may not be aware of this, and I don't want to brag, but we've won quite a few awards in our day. Oh, really? For what? Well, it's something Digby and I both are involved in. A little known sport called log rolling. Log rolling? We're pretty quick on our feet, aren't we, little buddy? Well, I don't like to per perform. I'm not, not very uh, competitive, but it, I've enjoyed my time in this it, sp 
sport. It, it's very scary, though, it, it, especially if you fall into the water it, it, and a log rolls right over the top of you. But, but, oh but, but, but Brody is never afraid when it comes time to compete. He's so courageous. Wow, that, that does sound pretty scary if it was a roll over you like that. Oh, oh. it's nothing. You just have to choose to not let fear control you. If you don't keep your eyes on the prize, you're sure to fall every time. Hmm. Remember the Apostle Peter, Digby? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Once he took his eyes off Jesus, into the water he went. Yeah. He started off with courage, but gave in to fear in the end. D -d 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 that's right, Brody. B -b and each time we, we go out and, and get up on that log, we, we, we overcome our fear, and, and, and we're courageous by, well, realizing that it, getting that trophy is more important than our fear. So, 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 so I guess I have a little courage, too, don't I, Brother Codwell? Well, Maybe of course just a you little? do. Of course you do. I mean, everybody's afraid. I, I, I'm even afraid of heights. I don't like heights. <gasps> no, no, no way. That, that, that's impossible, Brother Codwell. How, how could you be? I mean, you must be at least seven feet tall. You're already no. way up there. It, 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 I would never have thought that you would be afraid of anything. If I was as big as you, I, I sure wouldn't be afraid of heights. I, I wouldn't be afraid of anything. Oh, no, no. Even Brother Jason, you know, he's, he's afraid of uh, close, really close, tight spaces. He's claustrophobic. Oh, I didn't know, know that. Yep. I, I, I don't even think about uh, being in uh, small, tight, dark places. Digby, it's not your size that matters. It's what's on the inside that counts. Yep, he's right. God looks on the heart. And, and, and Brody, the Bible says that what time I I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I think everybody has things they're afraid of. But I, I really do. I want to have courage like you, Brody. To have courage, you have to choose it. Courage doesn't mean you're not afraid. It means even though you're afraid, you go ahead and do it anyway. Oh, yep. so, so, so I'm not wrong to be scared? No, Digby. Just ask God to give you courage, and he will. Oh, oh, thank you, Brody. You're welcome, little buddy. Hey, race you to the lake for some log rolling, but I'll make you a salmon sandwich. It'll be on me, all right? Yeah, 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 hey, 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 wait for me, Brody. Uh, good, 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 goodbye, Brother Codwell. Goodbye, Brody, Brody, don't Brody. leave me in the Man. dirt. Just See, even Brody and Digby. See, Digby's even afraid. Everybody's afraid at some point. It's what you do when you're afraid. Are you going to have courage or are you going to live in fear? All right, let's Absolutely. I hope you guys are learning. Listen, Brody and Digby, they teach you different things each and every day. You go through things in your life. I go through, in my, through things in my life. And the more we go through things, the more we learn, the more we overcome things. I love the definition of courage. Some people think, like they said, that you're not afraid. No, that's not true. Courage means you're afraid, but you still choose to be brave anyway. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to talk about a character all right, and tell a story. This is an important story, okay? It's for our message time today, okay? And I'm going to look into God's Word, all right, in a certain book of the Bible, the book of Daniel in the Bible, and we're going to look at a certain story, a story maybe that you've heard before, maybe you haven't heard it before, but it's an important story, and we're going to talk about, listen, this key word of courage. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 6, Daniel chapter number six, okay? Now, we've talked about some different words, haven't we? We sure have. There's all kinds of choices up here. The first word we talked about the first day, what was it? Oh, it was this one right here. There was the word faith. Remember, faith is what? Believing or trusting in something that you cannot see. That is faith. And boy, that's a difficult choice, but it's important. Then we also learned about another choice last time. It was this word right here, the word charity. Which is another word for, some of you know it, love. Very good. Listen, this is another choice that we need to add to our life that turn us into a champion. Today we're talking about this one here. It's been mentioned several times. The word courage. Bravery. Choosing, listen, to do stuff that may be very, very hard even though you're afraid. You step out. You face your fear. You do it anyway. We're going to look at a special character in the Bible 
who showed tremendous courage, tremendous courage. His name was Daniel. Now, Daniel lived way, 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 way back, thousands of years ago. This is a true story. It happens in Daniel chapter number six of the Bible. You can read it for yourselves. But what happened was a long time ago, the Babylonian people went in and attacked Israel. And they took hostages. They took kids out of that country and took them back to Babylon. Can you imagine being taken as a hostage out of your country back to another country? You don't speak the language. You don't know the people. You don't know the customs. You don't know anything. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, verse number 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. You know what that means? He chose to have courage even when he was a child. He said, I'm not going to live the way they live. I'm not going to do the things they do. I'm going to honor the one true God. I'm going to show courage with my life no matter what it costs me. Because of that, as you move on the story, through the story, as Daniel starts to get older, the king and the princes start to notice this guy, Daniel, he has favor with God. There's something special about this guy, Daniel. He's not like everyone else. He's not a loser. This guy's a champion. He's a winner. They didn't know the reasons for it, though. The reason was because he had courage. Every day, he chose to be brave. The other princes, because as he got older, he rose right to the top of the other kings. Every king, new king that came on the scene, he was an advisor to the king. Daniel, the, the, the kid that was a, a prisoner before, oh no, he went right to the top. And this king would pass off the scene, another king would come on, and guess what? They'd make Daniel an advisor to that king because he was so wise, because he trusted in God. He had faith. He showed love. Listen, he had courage. The other princes did not like him at all. They thought, we have got to catch this guy, Daniel, and get rid of him. He's making the rest of us look bad. So what happened was, the Bible says in Daniel <clears throat> chapter number 6 and verse number 3, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The king said, Daniel's so great, he should be in charge of everybody. Boy, those other presidents and princes, they did not like him at all. The Bible says, then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Listen carefully what it says. But they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Verse 5 says, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Here's what happens, guys. They said, Daniel so does so many good things. He makes so many righteous choices. We can't find anything he does wrong. How are we going to entrap him? How are we going to ensnare him? One of them had an idea. I got an idea. Here's what we'll do. We will make a law. We'll go to the king and say, King, you're such a great king. We want to make a law for 30 days that no one in the realm can pray to anyone but you, king. That's how much people think of you. Of course, the king's pride rose up in him. He thought, wow, they really think of me that much? Are you kidding me? They voted you in every time? You, I mean, you get the vote every time. I guess I am a pretty good king. I, I guess I am. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, you, you're like a god, they said. Oh, I don't know if I'd go that far. But no, we want you to pass a law. For 30 days, they can't pray to anyone else but you. And make it official. Sign it. Put your ring seal on it to where it's official. If anyone is caught praying to any other god but you, they get thrown into the den of lions. He said, okay. So he passed the law. Listen, he put his signet on it. Listen carefully what happens. They knew that Daniel prayed to the one true God. Three times a day, he would go on his porch, his balcony. He would open his doors and he would pray to the one true God three times a day. They'd watched him do that every day. He never missed. They thought, we got him now. Anytime now, he should be stepping outside to pray and we're going to nail him. We'll get him. That's what happened. The Bible says, listen, in verse number 10 of Daniel chapter 6, listen carefully. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he knew they passed the law. He could have said, well, they passed the law. I'm not allowed to pray to God. I'll just pray to God when I'm asleep at night. I'll just kind of close my eyes and, you know, no one will see me do it. That would have been the coward's way out, wouldn't it? Not Daniel. Daniel said, no, it's going to take courage, but I'm doing it anyway. The Bible says, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house 
and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time, which means, guess what? Daniel didn't change one thing. He prayed just like he always prayed. He said, listen, I'm not changing anything. God is still God. I'm still praying to him. You know what happens next? They're waiting to catch him. He stepped out on the balcony. We got him. They sent the soldiers. They brought him, listen, before the king. Now, the king loved Daniel, but he had no choice because what had happened? Daniel had broken the law. He couldn't say, well, I'm going to let Daniel get off. I know I shouldn't, but I like Daniel, so I'm letting him off. No, he'd already wrote it into law. He'd signed it with his, with his ring, his seal. He couldn't change the law. They said, we caught Daniel praying to his God rather than praying to you, king. Then he realized what they had done. He had no choice. Daniel came before him, and Daniel said, listen, do you think I would honor you above my God? You know I would pray to my God. He knew that the men had tricked him. The king knew that, but he couldn't do anything about it. He said, listen, I'm bound by the law of the Medes and the Persians. I, I can't do anything about it. I have no choice, Daniel. I have to sentence you. I have to put you in the den of lions. Daniel realized that. The king was bound by his own word and by the law. Boy, whew, can you imagine knowing you're getting ready to be thrown into a den of lions? You say, boy, that would take courage. You're right. Daniel did have courage. Courage, yes, but notice the other choices as well still come in. Remember we talked about the choice of faith, believing and trusting in something that you cannot see. Don't you see that Daniel is also showing faith? He has to believe that God will deliver him. He has to trust in God and say, God, I sure hope you know what you're doing. I'm trusting you. I prayed to you just like I'm supposed to. Boy, I can just hear them lions now. I'm nervous. I'm scared. But he chose to have courage. He chose to have faith. You know what? To have faith in God and to have courage in God, in a God that you've never seen, guess what else I see? I also see the choice we talked about last time. Charity. Charity means what? Love. Don't you think Daniel loved God? He had to love God. He would have never risked his life to be thrown into a den of lions. No, we see that. Notice all these choices go together. Daniel was a champion because he chose to put faith and charity and courage. All these choices he chose to put together. I can still imagine what it was like that day when the soldiers grabbed him and they bound him. And they bound him and he started pushing him forward. He's walking toward the den of lions. I don't know how long they'd starve these lions. The Bible doesn't tell us. The Bible just says, that, listen, there were lions in it. It was a den of lions. You know how big a lion is? Lions are huge. They're ginormous. You think a man is any match for a lion? The Bible doesn't even tell us how many lions there were. They opened the den. I don't know if they threw him down. I believe they threw him down because the Bible says later that people dropped into it. So the den was open this way. The lions couldn't get out. They dropped him down there. there. Can you imagine being taken by soldiers and thrown into the darkness? And you don't know how far the fall is. And you, you find you, you land. Ah, oh, I kind of hurt my leg. And all of a sudden, here's what we find. We find Daniel right in the middle of this den of lions. Can you imagine hearing the growls? Did you know? You can look it up for yourself. Did you know you can hear a lion roar a mile away? Can you imagine being inside of a den with that many lions all growling, what your ears would feel like? You're talking about being scared. His lips were dry. His hands and palms were sweaty. He thought any second now out of the darkness, this lion's going to jump on me and crunch me. I'm going to be gone. Do you know how far a lion can jump? Did you know I have done some study on lions? Do you know if a lion is running and bounding, that in one single bound, a lion can jump 30 feet? That is 10 yards in one jump. I've heard people say, well, if a lion ran after me, I'd just run away. Run away? What are you, the flash? You cannot run a lion. He's stuck in a den. He knows, listen, this is over. This is the end. I'm done. But he had what? Courage. He had charity, love for God. He had faith in God. He believed God. The Bible says, listen, when the lion started after him, that God sent his angel and closed the lion's mouths. Boy, wouldn't that have been awesome to see? That would have been amazing. 
All of a sudden, Daniel's standing there right in the middle of the lions. He's praying to his God. Just I think Daniel prayed three times a day in the den of lions, just like he did when he was outside. His routine didn't change. His habits didn't change. He was thanking God for protecting him. You imagine standing with lions all around you and they want to eat you, but they can't open their mouth because God won't let them. Look at the power of courage. Look at how you can become a champion for God when you choose the right choices. What would have happened to Daniel if he had been a coward? Think about it. The story says that the king couldn't sleep that night. Oh, no. He was scared for his friend Daniel. He was bound by the law of the Medes and the Persians. He had to throw him in. He had no choice. All night he wrung his hands and thought, why did I let them men trick me? The, one of the best friends and counselors I ever had, Daniel, I've thrown into the den of lions and he's going to die. And it's my fault. Early the next morning, the Bible says he came running to the den and he told the soldiers, roll the stone back. And he looked down in there and said, Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, is, has the God whom thou servest continue to live, did he deliver you? He didn't think he would hear any response. And Daniel hollered back, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and have shut the lion's mouth. They haven't hurt me. Wow. The end of the story is he gets Daniel back up out of there and all the evil men that falsely accused Daniel, they took them and threw them in the den of lions. I've heard some people that don't believe the Bible say, well, them lions, maybe they weren't even hungry. That's not true. Because the Bible says when they threw the evil men in, that the lions ate them before they hit the ground. They caught them in the air, crunch, 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 gone. That's how hungry they were. But God had protected Daniel. Why? Because of his courage, because of his bravery, because of his faith in God. Isn't it amazing what courage can do. You may be listening to my voice today and you may be thinking, wow, to be a hero like Daniel, he must have been something special. He must have been like a superhero. Oh no, he wasn't a superhero. He was just a man, just a human being like you and like me, but a person that made the right choices. And when you make the right choices, God turns you into a champion. Maybe you're listening right now and you say, you know what, Mr. Jason, I tend to be a coward. I tend to live my life in fear. I don't show courage very often. Do you know what? Maybe you need to pray and ask God to give you, listen, that courage. Say, God, help me to be courageous. Help me to not be a coward. Help me to step out by faith with my love for you and have courage. Listen, when you choose courage and add that to your life, listen, God turns you into a champion. Maybe you're here today and say, Mr. Jason, I I know I can't be a champion for God. I'm not even a Christian. I've never even accepted Jesus as my Savior. If I was to die, I'm not even sure I would go to heaven. Listen, don't you want to go to heaven? Everyone should want to go to heaven. You say, can you earn your way there? No. Can you work your way there? No. Maybe some people get to go and some people don't. You just flip a coin? No. Or maybe you have to be lucky. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with believing that Jesus died for you. See, Jesus, understand, Jesus does all the work. It is not working your way to heaven. That's not how you get there. It is accepting the gift of salvation. God did all the work. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross. He paid the penalty for your sin. He paid the payment to wash your sin away. All you have to do to get salvation is receive the gift. You don't work for it. Jesus did the hard part. You just simply accept it. Let me show you what I mean, okay? I've got a a little word here. Let me pull it out here. It's the word admit. This is something you have to do to become a Christian. Listen, Jesus did the work. He's the one that died on the cross. He's the one that shed his precious blood. He's the one that obeyed the will of his Father and was willing, listen, to come down and suffer and bleed and die for you and I. He was willing to do that. You know what? To become a Christian, you have to admit that you're a sinner. Now, I've met people that say, no, not me. Not me. I've never sinned one time. Never done one wrong thing. Guess what? That person can never be a Christian until they're willing to admit, listen, that they need to be saved. They have to admit. So you have to be willing to admit that you're lost. Be willing to admit that you need to be saved. That's what you have to do. But you know what else? You have to admit. But also, not only admit, you have to be willing to do something else. Admit 
that you need to be saved, but you also, listen, you have to, listen, be willing to, listen carefully, believe. You have to believe that Jesus died for you. The Bible says, listen, Acts 16, 31, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So you have to admit you're a sinner. You have to believe that Jesus died for you. Listen, I'm so glad Jesus was willing to give his life. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Boy, I'm so glad that he was willing to come and die on the cross for me. Listen, I hope you're willing to admit and believe. But listen, admit, believe, but also you have to do something else. Admit you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died for you. You also have to, listen, be willing to confess. You say, what does that word mean? The Bible says, listen, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you have to admit you're a sinner. You have to believe that Jesus died for you and then you have to confess with your mouth. That means you have to pray. You have to call upon Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever, that means anybody, shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Maybe you need to do that today. Maybe you need to bow your head right now and admit that you're a sinner. Say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I was born that way. I've sinned many times. God, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin. I believe that you died for me. I'm asking you. I'm confessing with my, my mouth. I'm calling on you and asking you to save me. Maybe you need to do that right now. Would you do that? Would you bow your head right now where you're at and ask Jesus to save you? Would you call upon him right now? Would you confess that Jesus is your Lord? Bow your head right now where you're at. No matter where you're at, doesn't matter where you're at. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you be willing to trust Jesus as your Savior right now? Say, dear Jesus... I know I'm a sinner. I admit that. I believe you died on the cross for me. You shed your precious blood to wash my sin away. And I'm confessing right now. I'm calling on you right now and asking you to save me. Would you do that right now? That's all you have to do. You see, that sounds so simple. It is simple. I told you, Jesus did the hard part. He died on the cross. All you have to do is accept the gift of salvation. Will you ask him to save you right now? Maybe you need to talk to your mom or your dad or maybe your aunt or your uncle. Maybe your grandpa or your grandma, they're Christians. Maybe you need to stop where you're at right now and say, listen, will you show me how to get saved right now? They'll do that. They'll do that. What about you that are already saved? Maybe you're listening to my voice right now and you say, I'm already a Christian. I remember the day I admitted I was a sinner and I believe that Jesus died for me and I called on him and asked him to save me. I know I'm saved. Maybe you know you're saved, but are you a champion? Do you have courage? Have you made the choice of charity? Have you chose faith? We've been learning these choices. Are you willing to sacrifice for others like Mr. Gruff talked about yesterday? He said, no, I'm, I'm missing these choices in my life. I haven't been making the right choices. I've been making some of the wrong choices. Maybe you're not the champion God wants you to be. Maybe you need to bow your head right now. And say, God, forgive me for not being the champion I should be. God, forgive me for always making excuses and saying, well, I'm only a kid. What do you expect? I can't be a champion until I'm a grown-up. Where's that written? I know many people in the Bible that became a champion when they were very young. Elmer talked about David today, killing Goliath, killing the giant. He could have said, I'm only a kid. I can't beat a giant. That man's a champion. I'm only a... He was a champion too. Why? Because he made the right choices. Maybe you need to choose right now to make the right choices so you can be a champion for God. Bow your heads, please. Close your eyes. If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, ask Him to save you today. If you know you're saved but you're not the champion you should be, ask God to help you make the right choices so you can be a champion for Him. Let's pray together, okay? Lord, we thank You again for the day that You've given to us. I thank you for the blessings of the day. I thank you for each person that's listening to the sound of my voice. It doesn't matter if they're four years old or 24 years old. It doesn't matter. I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would work on their heart. If they're not a Christian, they've never accepted you as their Savior. I pray right now they would bow their heart and ask you to forgive them of their sin. They would admit they're a sinner. They would let you know they believe on you right now. They would call upon you and ask you to save them.
Lord, for those that are listening that are already saved, they, I'm, they know they're on their way to heaven, but they're not the champion they should be. They've been making wrong choices. They don't have courage like they should. God, may they choose that today so they can become a champion for you. God, help each one of us to become the Christians you saved us to be. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, very, very good. I hope you're learning some things about being a champion. I don't know about you, but I want with all my heart to be a champion for God, only done by the choices that we make. Let's see if some of our characters know the answers to some of the questions that we're going to give, okay? And you at home that are listening, you try to answer the question. I know some of you are really smart. You know all the answers. We'll see what happens, okay? We'll see who's in the hot seat today. Oh, the first one in the hot seat today is Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Hello. Now, Charlie, I have a question for you. Let me get my squeaker over here. I'm going to ask a question, all right? And then I'm going to squeak the squeaker. Once I squeak the squeaker, you have 10 seconds to answer the question correctly, okay? Okay. If you get it right or you get it wrong, I'll tell you to exit, okay? Here we go. Question number one. What was today's choice that can make you a champion? What was the choice we talked about for today? Wait for the squeaker. Let me think. Uh, oh, wait. I know. You have to have Courage. Yes, the answer is courage. Very good, Charlie. You may exit. Thank you so much for playing the game with us. I hope you at home knew that answer. Courage, courage. You need it if you're going to be a champion. Courage is essential. Let's see who's in the hot seat next. It's my good buddy, Elmer. Hey, Elmer, how you doing, pal? Hey, buddy, Now, listen, I know you're pretty brilliant. I can tell you got a lot of brains, okay? Here is the question. What are you trying to say? I said you got a lot of brains. Oh, a... yeah, that's one thing I got a lot of. I can tell, yeah. Here's the question for you. Now, listen, don't just scream out the My answer. My siblings used to call me smarty because okay. I'm smart. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm going to ask a question. Do not answer till you hear the squeaker sound, and then you have 10 seconds to answer. Here's the question. In your own words... What does courage mean? Can you repeat that? I, I was kind of daydreaming. Sure. In your own words, what does courage mean? Well, that, that squeaker's kind of distracting. Fine. I won't squeak it this time. I'll just say Thanks, go. I appreciate that. Fine. I'll just say go, and then you can answer. Ready? Yeah, Here we go. That, you know I like that better. Fine. What does courage mean? Go. Courage means being, well, let me, yeah, being brave even when you're scared stiff. That's, exa that's a very good answer. Being brave. Even when you're scared yeah, stiff. Yeah, see that you didn't confuse me. You, you confused me with the squeaky thing. I, I, I got you. So I, I, I'll, I'll, I won't use the squeaker with you. How about that? Yeah, Good job, Elmer. You, you got the question correct. You may exit. We'll see oh, who's thanks. coming to the hot seat next. Elmer got it. Listen, being brave, even when you're afraid. Listen, Daniel was afraid, thrown in the den of lions. But listen, he showed courage anyway. He was afraid, but he was brave anyway. Who's in the hot seat next? Well, let's see who it is. This is going to be the next question. Ready? Here. It's Duncan. Duncan made it all the way over from there from his box. Are you, are you ready, Duncan? Here's the question. What was the name of the hero in our story today? He showed a lot of courage. What was his name? Wait for the squeaker. You have 10 seconds. He was a champion. Yeah. Yes, he was a champion. Hi. What was his name? Name? Daniel. Yes, Daniel. Very good. He's a champion. He was a champion. You're exactly right. Okay, you can exit. Thanks so much, Duncan. Sprinkle, he got it. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Yes, sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, man. He's right. Daniel was the champion in today's story. We're going to see who's in the hot seat next, okay? Oh, it's my good friend Sammy. Hi, Sammy. Hi. Oh, you think you know the answer to this question? Well, of course I do. Okay, I forgot your melody. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the question. Get ready. Okay. How did Daniel show courage in our story today? Let me, let me back up a little bit. He was told he couldn't do something anymore. 
but he showed courage in doing it anyway because it was the right thing to do. What did he keep doing? And in doing that, he showed courage. Wait for the squeaker. You got 10 seconds. Mm. Mm. I know this. What did he keep doing even though he was told he couldn't do it anymore? Don't, 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 don't tell me I know it. Okay. Um, Seven seconds. The pressure is insane. <laughs> I can't think straight. Five there. seconds. Yes, yes. yes he I got it right. You got it right. Thank you, Sammy. You can exit. He I kept praying. Pray. Daniel was told, no, you can't pray anymore. You have to pray to the king. You can't pray to your God. Daniel said, no, that's wrong. I'm going to step up and show courage and pray anyway. So he did. He showed great courage by continuing to pray to his God. All right, we're back to Charlie. Charlie's ready. Charlie got the last one. Here's the question, Charlie. Get ready. I'm going to squeak the squeaker, okay? Then you have 10 seconds to answer, okay? Get ready. In the story today, Daniel showed great courage. They told him if he was caught praying, they would throw him where? And where, Charlie, did they end up throwing Daniel? Wait for the squeaker. Oh, this is an easy one. Okay. He was thrown in the lion's den. Yes, very good, Charlie. You can exit very good. He was thrown in the den of lions. Exactly right. Boy, I still can't imagine being thrown in there just for praying to your God. Wow. That is extreme courage. Unbelievable. Let's see who's in the hot seat next. Back to my buddy Elmer. He's ready. Oh, I better put the squeaker down. He don't like the squeaker. Yeah, that's right. Don't, don't confuse me now. No squeaker for you. No squeaker, no squeaker for you. Here we go. Here's the next question. You have to think on this one. Cars, Did look at me. I can thank you. you. You can't believe. I think all the time. I can tell. All right, listen. When Daniel was taken, he was thrown in the lion's den. He thought he was a goner, but he had courage anyway. Just when he thought the lions were going to attack him, they didn't attack him because something or someone shut the lion's mouth. Who or what was it? Go. Now, let me get this straight. You want to know who closed his mouth? No, not Daniel's mouth. When the lions went to attack Daniel, the Bible says something or someone closed the lion's mouth and protected Daniel from being eaten by the lions. Who or what protected him? What, what closed the lion's mouth? So you want to know who protected him. Right. Well, that's easy. God protected him. But who closed the lion's mouth? Oh, who, who closed it? Well, uh, well, uh, did, did Daniel do it? Well, he, he sounds like he's a tough guy. No, he, no, Daniel did not close the lion's mouth. I don't know where you got that from. Well, uh, uh, you, you sure you're not using that squeaker? I, I didn't use the squeaker. Oh, I thought I heard it. No, no, I didn't use the squeaker. Yeah, who, who, come on, who closed the lion's mouth? Why, you thought Daniel closed the lion's well, mouth? Well, don't rush me now, I'm thinking. You're supposed to have 10 seconds, and that was a long time ago. Ten sec. Well, who can think in ten seconds? <laughs> That's not enough. Ah, uh, fine. I'll give you a little bit more time. Come on. Who closed the lion's who, mouth? Well, just be patient. Let me think. We're running out of time here. Uh, let me. Wait, 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 wait. Was it a? Was he sent by God? Yes. I know this one. I knew I knew it. I just needed to think about okay, it. Okay, who closed the lion's mouth? It was the angel. Yes, yeah, God's right. angel closed the lion's mouth. See, I just had to think about it. Right, okay, you can exit out, Thanks I for helping knew, us. I knew that one. You just patience. Uh, I need a squeaker back. All right, we'll see who's in the hot seat next. In the hot seat next for the next question. I hope you guys at home are getting these questions, getting the answers correctly, okay? The next one in the hot seat is, get ready, I hope you guys know the question, all right? I'll go ahead and ask the question. Oh, it's back to Duncan again. I sh I'm sorry, Duncan, I should have gave you more time. He has to climb all the way up to the ledge. Yep. It it's hard when you're small. Listen carefully, Duncan, okay? What was the reference for the memory verse today? What was the book? The chapter and the verse. It talked about having courage. What book of the Bible 
the chapter and reference. Ready? The Bible. Yes, it is in the Bible. What book? Yep, yep, I knew, I knew. No, 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 no. What book of the Bible in the chapter and verse? What was the memory verse? Was he a champion? No, not champion. What book of the Bible? Joshua. Yes, yes, Joshua what? Joshua. What chapter? I'll give you a hint. One or two. Good. One, 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 one. Of course it's one now. You got now. I'm sorry. You got an exit. You got an exit. Good try. Good try. He was close. It was Joshua 1 9. You guys at home knew that. That's a memory verse 4 today, okay? Joshua 1 9. Back to our friend Sammy. Sammy. <laughs> Are you ready, Sammy? Here's the question. If you were listening today, Brody and Digby, they're good friends of mine. One's a bear, one's a mole. Brody and Digby like to compete in a certain thing. They love to do it together. Do you know what it is? Wait for the squeaker. It's a sport. It's a sport, yes. Oh, that's easy. What? Baseball. It's not baseball. What? Please it's exit. Not baseball. Please exit. It's log rolling. Log rolling, okay? That's what they like to do, log rolling, okay? Uh, I hope you guys are getting these right, okay? Also, we gave the gospel today, and we talked about some different things you have to do. Oh, Charlie's here. Charlie, we were talking about to get saved, you have to say a couple things. Jesus did all the work. He's the one that died on the cross. But you have to admit you're a sinner, first of all. You can't become a Christian if you don't admit you're a sinner. And then we gave a word with the letter B. You also have to do something with the letter B. You have to admit you're a sinner, and later you're going to call upon the Lord. But before you confess Jesus as Lord or call upon Him, you have to admit you're a sinner, and then letter B, you have to, what's the word? Uh, let me think. Believe. Believe, that's it. You have to believe. You have to put your faith and your trust in God. Very good, Charlie. You can exit. Very, very good. We'll do one more question one more question okay one more question we're talking about different choices today things that we add to our life that can make us a champion for God we've talked about different ones this week we're gonna stop with my buddy Elmer Elmer's gonna get this when you ready Elmer oh I'm gonna put the speaker down here we go here's the question today we talked about you're the one that gave us the choice the choice was courage that helps you be a champion Elmer can you think in your mind of another choice a good choice Besides courage, that would make someone a champion. Name one. Go. Wow, there, there's so many. How I, can you ask me a question like I that? I just need one. There's just, I can name hundreds of them. I just need one. I could probably name maybe even hundreds of hundreds. I just need one. Just one. Just one. Besides courage. Let me think here. There's just so many, you know, it's hard to pick one. Just pick one. Pick one, let me think here. Um, I, I think I know one that, yeah, my one friend, he, my Bernie told me about this. It's, uh, he said he, uh, his, his, one of his greatest qualities was, uh, what was it? Oh, it was, uh, humility. Humility is a that very good choice. Humility can turn you into a champion as well. Very good, Elmer. Very good. Listen, hang tight right here one second. I hope you guys have enjoyed the program today and learned some things about being a champion. Listen, we've talked about faith. We've talked about charity. Listen, these different choices in our life help us to become a champion for God. I hope, listen, you will choose to put these into your life. We also talked today about this one right here. This one is courage. I hope, listen, you'll choose to put courage in your life. The more you make the right choices, God turns you into a champion. Join us again next time, guys, as we talk about another choice 
that will turn you into a champion for God, okay? Elmer, I want to thank you again. you didn't for... think I was going to get that right, did no, you? No, I, I did not think. I it on your face. I know, I know. I knew what I knew. I, but you did pick it, though. You got a good yeah, mind. Yeah, I, I just had to think a while. Is that what it was? Yeah.